Hi everybody, Dave Hill coming at you. Thank you for tuning in. We're having a great time with these lessons and you guys are practicing hard and getting really good. I've been hearing about you and uh, you're starting to scare me, so keep up the good work. All right, uh, well, let's take a look at uh, some things that we've uh, I've kind of been referencing in other lessons and I use them a lot in my examples, but I don't really talk that much about them and I will in other subsequent lessons, but I want to spend a whole lesson today just talking about chords, okay? We're going to spend a whole other course on, on the mechanics of chords and everything, but let's just review a few things here because I believe that a good healthy chord knowledge is always goes hand in hand with your knowledge of playing uh, scales and melodies and soloing and all of that. So I've taken the time to write out the five major caged chord systems that we've learned and that we've been using for a while now. And I know that you know these and you've been working on them, but um, I just want to review them and I want to add to them and show you how we're going to get other chords out of these patterns, okay? So a while ago we spent some time putting, putting these chord forms in various positions and various keys in the neck. But I want, I'll do that just for a quick review and then, and then I'm going to expand on them, okay? So let's take a look and let's just say we're going to play all these chords in the key of G, just the way they're written out right now. It's, it's literally going to go pattern four, pattern five, pattern one, pattern two, and pattern three. And the root's right there. In fact, I'll, I'll circle that for you. Okay. So. Let's just do it up in the key of G, and let's do one bar per chord. Here we go. Three, four. Pattern two. And pattern three. Okay? So that was all five shapes in the key of G of the caged, movable cage chords moving up this way. Okay, let's put you on your toes for a minute, though, and let's just change keys. Uh, you want to do that again? Okay, I understand. Let's do that again in the key of G. Here we go. Three, four. Pattern four. Pattern five. Pattern one. Pattern two. Pattern three. Okay, very good. Okay, let's just... Check you out and see how you're doing. You want to go up a fifth? No problem, I can do that. Let's start up in the key of D now. Here we go. And now we're going to start with pattern one down here. And then we're going to go to pattern two, and three, and four, and five. Okay, here we go. Three, four. Pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four. Pattern five. Okay, great. Well, um, do you think we can do another key? I bet you can. Let's just go. Let's go to a key. Hmm. Let's try B flat. Let's give you a flat key. So let's start with the lowest position of B flat. What do you think that's going to be? I bet it's going to be pattern two. Because there's my B flat root. And then it's going to be pattern two, three, four, five, one. So here we go. Three. Four. Pattern one, I'm sorry, pattern two, three, four. Pattern three, pattern four, pattern five, pattern one. And that's all five shapes again. So you can see the uh, connection with all these triads and how important they are, okay? But the, the real uh, power of these triads starts to become evident when you start to modify them to become all the other chords that you also need to be able to play. Triads are great, but there's other ty types of chords that you're going to want to play as well. So let's take a look at a few of these chords and modify them to see what we can get let's see the, from the basic triad shape. So this basic pattern four shape right here, it's great. It's got a lot of power. It's, it's thick. There's a lot of roots and fifths. Right, there's only one third, but if we want to do something that's got a little bit more color, let's say a major seventh, what are we going to do? 
Well, we've talked about it before. What we're going to do is we're going to drop one of the roots down into the major seven. And then we're going to now modify the, we don't just do it like, like that. Because that's essentially what I would do if I, if I only changed one note, but that's not a very strong voicing. There's something wrong with that root on top. So what we do is we simply modify it like this, and it makes it a little bit cleaner. We get rid of this note right here. Don't need that. We get rid of the fifth right here, and then we add the major seventh, all right? Now we've got, we've got the root, the major seventh, the third, and the fifth, and now we have a major seventh voicing. Okay, and we're gonna keep doing that with all these other shapes, so there's major seven right there. Started in this, now it goes to this, okay? Now in this next voicing, we have the root here, right? And we've also got another root right here. But we don't need two roots when this, if we want to make a major seven voicing. We want to drop one of them to the major seven, just like I dropped my eraser there. And I want to make it a major seven by doing this. Okay. Now we've got a nice major seven on top. Pretty cool, huh? So we had major triad, became major seven. Major triad became major seven that way. Okay. Backing up a little bit here, we see our next major triad. And again, we have two roots. And we know what we're going to do with one of these roots because if this is the third, the fifth, and the third again, let's, let's get rid of the extra root and drop it down to the major seven. Right? Now we have a nice voicing like this. Pretty cool, huh? So major try it becomes major seven this way. Okay. So moving along here, we go to our next position of G. And we have a root here and a root here. But once again, if this is a root, we know the major seventh is a half step below. And now we've got a very playable major seventh shape. Okay. And then finally, right, finally on the top here, way up here, it's a little harder to see this, but what we're just going to do is we're going to, we're going to, add the major seven on the top of this voicing and get rid of the lower part of the chord because it's hard to really to make a playable major seventh and just throw the major seventh on the bottom here or on the top so what we do is you end up modifying this shape a little bit and you, you throw you got to remember this is this is the root but we're going to use the major seventh on the top and we're going to get rid of the stuff on the bottom and that makes it much more playable. That makes it my, much more like. Right? And a very nice chord when you hear the G on the bottom. Sounds like a major seven. So these are now all the major seven shapes in five positions. So you've got originally the cage chords. Right? Becomes this. That's pattern four. Pattern five becomes started here. Became this. Pattern one started here and became this. Pattern two started this. I'm sorry, started here and became this. Pattern three started here and ended up here. Okay? So that's really a powerful information because now you're seeing how you can take all the basic chords you already know and add other notes. In this case, adding a seventh instead of one of the extra roots and you get a more colorful kind of harmony to the sound, okay? But it doesn't stop there. Okay, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna make all of these chords dominant seventh chords. And what do you think I'm gonna have to do there? Well, a dominant seventh chord is like the, f is the fifth chord of a harmonized scale. Right, there's a G7. And if you look at what a G7, shows you there's a there's a flat seven 
not a major seventh in the chord. In other words, this interval is called a flat seven or dominant seven. And so the nature of dominant seventh chords is their root, third, fifth, flat seven. Okay? So all I got to do is go over here again and make all these major seven chords. I got to drop one note. I keep dropping my eraser and make it the seventh a flat seventh. 